Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Natalie and I am a sixth grade middle school math teacher in Central California for those of you who are new to my channel. And today's video is going to be about one of my top three most helpful and most practical things that I do in my classroom that improves student achievement, structure, classroom management, and just pretty much everything you can think of. So if you're interested in learning more about how I structure daily warm-ups in my class, keep watching. Okay, so you're gonna see a whole bunch of tabs open, but I'm gonna show you the actual warm-up examples that I literally use from day to day. And then I'm gonna show you the version that's in my Teachers Pay Teachers, which is ed editable and all that good stuff. So let's start with obviously why you would want to use daily warm-up. So the first reason is because we know as teachers that we have students across the board um, with achievement levels. So like I'm a sixth grade teacher, but I literally have students who come in at first grade levels. I think I have someone who's in a kindergarten level. And then I have a couple students who are closer to a seventh grade level. So um, the way at the education system is set up, pacing is not on our side. Oftentimes, unfortunately, many people in the classroom are forced to follow a very strict pacing guide, and it doesn't allow for your students to actually show mastery. So the first reason why I love daily warmups is because it allows for you to give your students more opportunities to practice the skill, especially those super, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> of course, when I start recording, I lose my voice. So um, as I was saying, when you use daily warmups in a way that is going to allow for your students to have more opportunities to practice, then you're going to get more students moving to mastery or closer to being able to reach mastery. And so that is one of the big reasons why I love using warmups because literally it gives you extra time for your students to practice skills. The second reason is because we know all students, all kids, even adults are very forgetful. And so, for example, my first unit is ratios and proportions in sixth grade. And so my students might kill the test on unit rate, and that might be like in September. But come like April, right before state testing, they're going to be completely in the dark and probably not remember exactly how to do some of those problems. And so the big, big thing with daily worms is not only can you provide additional practice with current things you're learning, but you can spiral review. And that is huge because again, if you wait until the end of the year to review every single thing you taught them, you're going to have a harder time and students are going to have a harder time to kind of prep for state testing or whatever is coming up for you. So current um, practice or extra practice, whatever you want to, uh, how you want to think of that. And then the second reason why I love warmups is because they allow for you to spiral review very easily. Um, and I'm going to go into like how I structure them and all of that stuff. But the third reason why I love them is because it's literally like the core piece of my classroom management and like my daily routine. So um, the way you start class is super, super important. If your kids come in and they're crazy and wild and talking, it's probably a good depiction of how the day is going to go. And I'm not saying like kids have to come in silent and can't talk and can't, you know, have a conversation with someone, but if there are kids all over the place and they don't know what to do when they come to your class without you standing up there every single day and telling them, then there's probably some room for improvement. And so using these daily slideshows is a big, big piece of how I start my class and it helps structure the rest of my day. So I'm going to go ahead and open up one of these. I'm just going to pick a random one. Let's open up week 10. And just to be completely transparent, the reason why I could not, because for years now, I've had teachers asking to purchase these daily slideshows off of me. And um, I started using them my first year in middle school. And my partner teacher, we both started there together, started using them the second year. And we literally have a folder where we keep all of them um, each year. But now that we both are on the same page or have been, um, we take turns making these and we just pull a lot of questions from different places sometimes and images and due to like trademark and copyright and all of that stuff, I can't put these as is on teachers pay teachers. And obviously it's not all of my work. So, um, just want to put that out there so that it makes sense why you're going to see like two different things, but this is basically what the slideshow looks like. So it's a template 
And on this first cover slide, I literally just put whatever week it is and the dates because I do put these into Google Classroom for my students. And then you're going to notice that there's one for each day of the week. Sometimes there's a couple extra slides depending on if we have something going on that week or day. Um, but there's five sections. So you have a spot for assignments. And this is where when my students come in, they write in their planner and it's whatever is written in this box. And then the next thing they do is they take out all their supplies for the day. So the heading is not editable, but I literally can just copy and paste this or duplicate the slideshow from the previous week um, and then just change out the information. I like to put reminders on here just so my students know what to expect um, for that week or what's coming. And then this is kind of like the agenda for the day. So um, I'm sure we all got that question like, what are we doing today? Well, that helps with this being here because um, they can just look here when they walk in. And then this is where I have the warm up question. So it just really depends on the week. Um, we always do between two and three questions. I don't think we've ever done four. And you're going to notice that all week the questions are the same. And then again, there are certain days where like something might be a little bit different or we have less time. So we just adapt as needed. But that is a huge piece of this process by letting your students practice the same type of questions all week. They're going to get very specific targeted practice and they're also going to gain confidence because on Mondays, depending on what it is, um, most of your students will probably not get the questions right. But by Tuesday, Wednesday, and they'd better have it by Thursday, you have most of your students being able to um, successfully complete the problems. And then on Fridays, um, I guess this was a bad example because um, if you follow me on social media, you know I do classroom transformations. So let's pick a different one because that Friday will be, I think we did a CSI day that day. So like on this one, the warm-up questions for um, that week were dividing fractions questions. And so on Friday, right here, you're going to see it says checkpoint. And so a checkpoint is basically just like a mini quiz, but it's literally only between like four and eight points. And rather than doing the warm up together during class, they're doing it on their own um, on paper. So that one does go in for a grade. I do not put in grades for the warm ups throughout the week. Literally, after my students come in, write in their planner, glue their notebook pages, and get out their supplies, they get the whiteboard and they do it on there. The whole process of starting class is between five and seven minutes. And then after that, sometimes they check with a partner. Um, I try to model it every day. So then I'll go over it and I have them keep track of like how many questions they got right. So I'll literally say like, okay, put a check mark if you got that one. And I have them tell their partner so that they have some accountability. Um, and it also gives them like some self-assessment there because if it's Wednesday and you're still missing both questions, then you probably need to come in and get some help at break or ask a question to someone near you. So that's what that process looks like. So Monday through Thursday, they do the same type of warm up questions. Friday, we do checkpoints and that does go in for a grade. So um, as far as organization of these and why this process is very low prep, literally once you have a template that you like, um, you can literally just duplicate it every week. So for example, week one was made out when I was ready for week two, when I was getting it ready for that, um, coming week, I just right click and then I hit make a copy and then it'll duplicate the whole slideshow. And then I just go in and change out the information that's needed. And that's literally what we do. So like, I just did this one earlier today. I should have recorded it, but I didn't think about it. I literally was at week 17. I made a copy of it and then I just changed out my information. So it's a super easy process. Um, obviously at first when you're getting to know the system, it's going to take a little bit of time to feel comfortable, but I literally can finish a whole slideshow in less than probably 10 minutes now. Uh, this is my sixth year doing it. So obviously I know the system well, but um, that's what it looks like for us in the classroom every week. So we're starting back from winter break next week. And so that's what this one is for. It's going to be the week of one night through one thirteen. Now, um, I also, so this is my other Google Drive. So I'm going to go to where I have my warm ups that I have available for purchase. Um, I'm not going to go into all of this, but I just want to show you the template and what it looks like. So if you're a sixth grade math teacher or just 
even a seventh or fifth grade teacher who's like, okay, a lot of this content is um, crossover or I can make some of it work, then I have these available. So I change the design just because I get bored. And so I go back and forth, but um, it's the same idea. You have your title slide. And then what I did was I made, and I have two sets now. So you have 12 whole weeks of made out questions for you. I always start the year with a, which one doesn't belong because I'm teaching the routine and teaching my students how it works. Um, but literally same process. I put in the Friday questions into these slideshows because I want to give teachers the option if they want to do a checkpoint or not. You could totally just take these questions and have your students do it on paper and still put it in for a grade. Um, and so, like I said, there are 12 weeks of that and I have answer keys. I have a pacing guide, some tips and stuff. Um, <clears throat> and I have in total 24 weeks of that. So this is the first set. This is the second set and I'm working on the third set and I'm going to get that up and then I'll bundle it all together. So again, if you're a sixth grade teacher, who's like, I don't want to make out all these questions, like help me out. Um, those are available on my teachers pay teachers, but I also just have slideshow templates, like blank ones without questions. Um, I think they're like a couple dollars at my teachers pay teacher store. Um, if you are someone who just wants to literally start from scratch with your own questions. So a couple of, um, I'm just going to open one of these, um, so you can kind of see as I'm speaking, there we go. Okay. So um, a couple questions I get all the time are, and I already talked about some of these, but the first one is where do I have my students do their warm up? So again, that is on a whiteboard. Um, I keep whiteboards on the top of my tables and students know the process because again, since day one, I have trained them. I remind them, I reinforce it. Um, so warm ups are done on whiteboards in my class. The second question I get all the time is what do I do when students aren't doing them or like the accountability piece? So I feel like it's just like anything in your classroom, like you have to enforce it. If you teach your students from the first day, first week of school, or whenever you decide to start this, maybe you're starting this like now and you're in the middle of the year. Um, you can't just say like, this is what you're gonna do. This is how much time you have and leave it. Like I am monitoring the classroom as they're doing this. I'm not just sitting at my desk. Um, and if I see students are taking too long, they're spaced out, they're talking, or they're just moving too slow. Like I'm like, okay, look though, like you have two minutes. By the time I come back around again, you better be almost halfway done with the first question or just giving them reminders. So this is something that if you want it to work and you want it to work well, you have to put in time and really, really make sure that you are holding your students accountable. Um, as far as grades, like I said, I don't put in a daily grade for these. I used to, um, it's just a lot of work and I used to do it on paper and it wasted a ton of paper. Um, I moved to this system, I think like two, maybe three years ago on whiteboards. And then I threw in the checkpoint two years ago and it works just as effectively. Um, and it's a lot easier to manage because it's just a Friday grade. It's literally two to three questions. Um, I have student assistants, a couple of periods who I have, it's very simple for them to help me grade that. And if you are monitoring the classroom, like, you know, who knows the content that you're covering that week and who doesn't for the most part. And so it's a pretty easy process. Um, and it allows for you to easily know like who needs more intervention. Like if you already tested on this standard or standards and they're still missing on warm up, then obviously this student needs some tutorial or intervention. So like I said, all of these resources are available on my teachers pay teacher store. Um, I have templates, I have ready to go sixth grade ones, but if you have any questions, um, feel free to drop them in the comment box, but also I have a whole blog post on this. So if you go to my website, the teaching files education, it's this one right here, how to effectively use daily warmups. And if you're more of a, like, uh, I guess paper person or like reading about things and being able to refer back, um, I literally broke down the whole process here. I have links to some of my TikTok videos. So let me know, like I said, if you have any questions, um, but that's pretty much warm ups in a nutshell. Okay, so that is what daily warm ups look like in my class in a nutshell. And I know that was a lot of information, but at the end of the day, my goal is to share things that I do in my classroom and allow for you to make them your own to work with your students. So 
I'm putting links below of things that are going to be helpful in supporting you in this journey if you're getting started or looking to revamp. But if not, I will talk to you later. See you in the next